slightly different from Nigel, so I hope you'll bear with me. I'm reflecting on the findings from a, a three-year um, EU FP7 project, which involved um, a large number, nine partner countries um, across Europe, that looked at um, enabling creativity uh, through um, or in and through maths and science uh, with children aged three to eight years. Um, so our project set out to explore the potential for developing creativity, inquiry and innovation in the context of those young folk in school and to build on the research findings we're just drawing to a conclusion now, um, end of March is the final conference in, uh, in Athens, um, to suggest implications both for policy and in particular for teacher education. Uh, so these are our project partners and clearly what I've chosen to do today is not draw across the whole project but to focus on the UK and with a particular reference to Northern Ireland data uh, and um, <coughs> the rest of the UK data. In fact the OU were responsible um, for collecting data in Northern Ireland. I've been over to Belfast quite a lot in the last spring. Last spring was our data collection in terms of field work as part of the um, project and the Institute of Education and Bishop Grotes have been involved in Wales and then um, in Scotland as well as also all three of us collecting in England. Uh, so the project encompassed five key strands. Um, I'm only focusing uh, on those uh, emboldened briefly here, giving some sense of the desk study of policy uh, and then moving on really to look at some of the fieldwork findings to begin to say when we look at exemplary practice which we sought to identify in terms of schools here in Northern Ireland and elsewhere where there was plenty of potential for the development of creativity. We didn't know whether we'd see it instantiated but we were identified schools carefully and with a long purpose for sample uh, process and then went to through the field work uh, to make field notes, audio, digital photographs of a series of events and so on as well as video um, of youngsters engaged in episodes as we claim to call them of creativity in science and maths teaching. Um, here in um, in Northern Ireland, uh, two schools, obviously pseudonyms, were involved. Uh, one, a county park nursery school, and the other, um, Ashford Integrated Primary School, as we've called them, uh, which were both um, in the same area on the outskirts here of Belfast. Uh, and the fieldwork involved uh, approximately 16 half days in the same classroom, visiting that same teacher with the same children over that period of time uh, and seeing some of the work develop over that time. And then I'm going to move on finally to look at some of the recommendations for policy and practice. There are 20 slides and I need to speed up, so I'll go quickly. Uh, but I'm hoping to kind of give you a big picture of it. So in terms of our understanding of creativity, we took the notion of little c creativity, the kind of everyday life-wide creativity that we all engage in, rather than the big c creativity in the concept of Einstein or Picasso, if you catch me. In terms of our understanding of it in the context of maths and science, we've come to agree on definition which... Uh, explores creativity as generating alternative ideas and strategies as an individual or as a collective in a community and reasoning critically between these in relation to um, widely accepted um, explanations and strategies. And we recognise that certain dispositions are characteristic of creativity, including uh, things like initiative, imagination, curiosity um, and thinking skills. So in terms of looking at the policy references, it's clear that actually across the UK, Northern Ireland and Scotland at the level of the curriculum, not the level of the science curriculum per se, but the level of policy statement, um, are much more focused and recognise the key role of creativity. In England, as we know, things have shifted more recently, and sadly, the last comment uh, implies an awful lot. Uh, the focus is on engendering an appreciation of human creativity and achievement, which by implication is not about the young developing their creativity, but recognising the great creative geniuses, which is arguably big C creativity, not the ownership and innovation of the individual who's generating new in context, age seven, age eight, but being able to build on that sense of their own um, forward uh, focus and ideas. Uh, so Scotland and Northern Ireland in a much stronger position uh, there. If we look at the rationale for the science curriculum in particular, this radar diagram highlights for us uh, that whilst Northern Ireland, highlighted here in green, uh, does seek uh, to provide a foundational education for future scientists and engineers, uh, it, its rationale focuses less on the uh, notion of developing positive attitudes to science and developing more innovative thinkers. Uh, 
So you do a very cl careful, close policy analysis of the big picture documents as well as the science documents, which is where this one's coming from, uh, and then uh, can drill down even further uh, into where pedagogic documents or the world about us, as the Denny document has here, as it were, um, highlights for us that there's an implicit emphasis on creative dispositions and, and exploration and inquiry across the UK, but not very explicit, uh, particularly in England and uh, Wales. Uh, whereas in Northern Ireland, as we see here again, we do get that recognition and reference to fostering children's natural curiosity and sorting, classifying, exploring, predicting and so on. So I think very encouraging here for Northern Ireland, not quite so encouraging uh, for the other contexts. Okay, let's move to the classroom-based fieldwork. That gives you a kind of frame in which teachers of nursery and uh, early primary children are working with that kind of context behind them and their assessment being related to the uh, aims and rationale for the curriculum. Uh, we chose in the project to take a, Sir Arge Blackford's framing <coughs> of pedagogical interventions and pedagogical framing. How is the curriculum framed at a local level, not just in terms of the national, but in this school, in this area um, of Belfast, etc. And so these are the kind of strands that I want to touch on with one slide on each, which will begin, I hope, to build an argument about how um, the pedagogy is or isn't fostering uh, creativity and what are some of the challenges for teachers um, and will somebody keep me an eye to time? Because I'm. A, will you wave at me at five minutes in? Okay. So in terms of uh, pedagogical interventions, we use this um, as a deductive framework, really, so that right across the nine partner countries, we're all zooming in in our multiple observations in multiple classrooms, uh, looking at what are uh, what is the practitioner's approach to pedagogy. We're finding that out through her paperwork. We're finding that out through interviews, and we're finding that out through observation and video. And then we're cross-referencing that within our own teams and then cross-referencing that across the, the um, project as a whole, which is why, as you can see, I could only focus on one strand here or we'd lose the will to live apart from <laughs> understanding anything. Um, right, so let's look at learning activities in the first place. Uh, the most common features that we observed across uh, the UK were children engaged in questioning, exploring, observing and making connections. In primary schools, the focus on making connections between scientific knowledge and understanding was much more evident than in preschool, perhaps not unsurprisingly. Uh, but in preschool uh, here uh, and across the UK commonly, there was more evidence of children engaged in their own planning uh, and developing their own questions. So they were planning their own inquiries more. They weren't entirely uh, child-led, but there were more child-led, child curiosity leading to the development of an investigation. Whereas in primary, uh, they were more framed by the teacher. So the learning activities were common, but who was framing them, as I'll come to again later, was um, somehow rather different. Um, if we move to looking at practitioners' approaches, in preschool again than in nursery classrooms, the teachers were involved more as facilitators of children's learning journeys, perhaps traditionally as Reggio Emilio and other early years arguments would, would hold, and indeed we saw that very splendidly here. Um, but also um, we saw in both phases uh, teachers uh, scaffolding children's learning to foster their creative engagement. So they might be scaffolding the learning through developing an open-ended activity, for example, or a planned structured activity, uh, and then also scaffolding it through interaction with the children, um, maybe with individuals or with the whole class. But that interaction was framed around scientific language and scientific context concepts, trying to take that learning on wherever it had got to in terms of the teacher's uh, engagement. One of the things we did see more uh, in, um, in uh, Northern Ireland and also in preschool generally was teachers standing back more before they intervene. So instead of rushing in to shape, they were standing back to observe, to listen, to look where the learning was going, and then were seeking to build on that. And of course, in so doing, they were fostering an increased degree of interaction between the youngsters who didn't have a teacher leading the way, but who had each other to have collaboration and opportunity and dialogue within. Uh, there was a fabulous uh, example um, here I observed in, um, in Belfast where the teacher was doing um, ice blocks and she'd frozen all sorts of creatures inside these lumps of ice, as it were, and then simply put them in a tray and then left the tray. And I thought, 
isn't she going to tell anybody that she's put those in there? I mean, the tray was there, and there were some overalls, as it were, and gradually a few children went and looked, and they didn't say anything. They just went and got themselves an overall, popped their overall on, and went over and started exploring. And she was watching all the time, but from afar, as it were. Gradually she moved over and joined them. But by that time they were asking one another and saying, what's in yours and what do I do with it? And one boy was bashing and bashing his ice block trying to get out the polar bear that was hidden inside because they were all uh, appropriate. Um, in terms of assessment, it has to be acknowledged that in terms of science assessment and creativity assessment, we saw, frankly, very little of it. It was difficult to evidence. It was mostly formative and integrated. This is true right across the UK. Um, uh, but uh, across the UK, there was less than half of the examples that we collected in those multiple case studies of teachers engaged in any kind of overt recorded assessment. There may have been internal assessment. I'm not critiquing that as a mode of moving youngsters on. Uh, but there was very little uh, recorded assessment. In terms of materials and resources, um, this was hugely significant, actually. Um, many of the teachers made very good use of their own resources that they created for the purpose. So very little reliance upon commercial schemes in either preschool or primary phase. This is a lovely uh, picture here, actually, of some children um, here in uh, Northern Ireland who were exploring the gingerbread man story and who were able to, through literacy, through social development, maths and science, inhabit the imaginative world of the uh, gingerbread man and then had plastic gingerbread men they were making and were trying to see if the gingerbread man would sink uh, or float, depending on whether they lay him on things or whether they <laughs> left him on his own, you know, naked, as one boy said. My gingerbread man's naked and he sunk. And I thought, well, is, there a, is there a correlation between the two here? But um, their own thinking their way forwards in terms of using resources and materials. Now, if we move away then from pedagogical interventions and move more towards pedagogical framing, uh, we can begin to see that some of the critical features at a school level were oriented around location, grouping, time, uh, and indeed uh, what the aims of the activity was, not the aims and objectives of the curriculum, but the aims and objectives the teacher had for that particular pedagogical activity. Uh, it was apparent in terms of the uh, focus that um, an understanding of science was an important feature for all these teachers uh, regardless. Uh, and developing that scientific knowledge was often related to the language that the teacher used. But in contrast, there were very markedly fewer examples of understanding the scientific investigations. I mean, there was lots of emphasis on investigations, lots of em investigations happening, but much less emphasis on developing an understanding of the scientific processes involved, considerably less such that planning fair tests or testing hypotheses or explaining, um, having that sense of a rationale and a reason for your position or your um, suggestion, as it were, was not strongly evidenced or featured um, in almost any of the data, really. We were quite surprised, indeed arguably shocked by it. The explaining of evidence seemed to be owned by the adults. So the children were given the space to play and to explore, but not to set up a fair test necessarily, and not often to explain um, their understanding or rationale. There tended to be a pause often, and then the teacher, perhaps pressured by time and expectation, stepped into the pause and voiced the explanation, which we were hoping we'd see the children uh, voice themselves, and indeed generate new when they did so. In terms of location two, that was one of the other main pedagogical challenges. We saw very little evidence of out-of-school uh, learning uh, and s making use of museums or field trips or indoor or outdoor role play areas. There were extensions to many classrooms. Indeed, most nurseries have extension to the classroom that's outside. But that was activity, again, simply in an outdoor setting. It wasn't actually enabling the youngsters to find, develop, and explore the resources uh, externally and then build from it. We did see a fabulous couple of examples in uh, Scotland where a wildlife area fostered children's interest and the teacher took that further on. But it was pretty rare right across the UK. In terms of grouping, and indeed I'd weave time into this, it was clear that in preschool, mixed ability, friendship groups often, uh, were the focus for science tasks. As I described there, anybody could come to that table. 
as it were, that ice tray, water tray. Uh, and that prompted collaboration because we had friends working together who chose to put overalls on and have the conversation. Uh, in primary, however, there was a, a stronger focus on whole class work, breaking down into small groups, but being drawn back into um, uh, whole class work again, and pretty often, even though these children are seven and eight years old, in ability groups. Uh, in the teacher's perception of their ability in relation to science at that moment. Now, that clearly influences the pedagogical interaction, because if you've only got 10 minutes in your ability group to ponder, to generate, to question, to uh, you know, consider alternatives, and then you're drawn back into that central frame of the teacher's pedagogy, you're caught with that opportunity to develop your curiosity and creativity. Uh, it's uh, demarcated and centralised by the teacher. So to summarise then, um, some of the differences we saw between primary and free school, particularly in Northern Ireland and in England, were that in Northern Ireland staff were more likely to stand back at preschool and allow children to explore for themselves, more facilitating, whereas in primary, the pedagogy was much more likely shaped by the teacher. It's interesting, uh, Mervyn mentioned how few people, took young primary youngsters, took part in that Young Scientist and Technology um, Award, BT piece. Uh, and it seems to me that in primary, our observations would tend to suggest that there's a very limited amount of play and exploration and curiosity in relative terms to preschool because it's framed, held and moved on by the teacher uh, rather rapidly. Um, so in terms of, co of, of uh, consequences and recommendations, I'll whiz through. Um, we're making suggestions at the moment with regard to um, the need to address in teacher education terms um, students, student teachers' own understandings of inquiry, problem solving and creativity. If they have come through a system in which they haven't perhaps been as engaged in exploring, creating and considering themselves, they may well be wanting to frame, deliver and um, develop knowledge without enabling that knowledge to be generated through engagement uh, and hands-on exploration. So IBSI and you know, supporting uh, inquiry-based approaches and creative approaches in teacher education would be part of that. And um, certainly all the schools where we saw the most successful practice in terms of fostering creativity uh, were, th were those schools where there was a whole school approach to adopting a more creative stance towards the curriculum, not just towards science. Yeah. So they were often involved in other projects too, or were eco schools or um, healthy school kits and so on. Um, in terms of pedagogy, um, I think these are our key findings so far, insofar as we would argue that in designing learning activities, teachers need to focus more on children's own questions uh, and planning and problem solving, uh, rather than only the questions that the teacher wishes to ask and have answered. Um, certainly, the use of IT was very rare. In Northern Ireland, it was, well, in fact, it was virtually absent across the 32 uh, so did two 16s, was virtually absent in both preschool and primary in terms of the use. That may be to do with access to computers and so forth, but there's great opportunities there to record thinking, uh, to measure, to uh, you know, confirm data, etc., etc., but they simply weren't being used. Um, and then in terms of assessment, we'd want to argue for more peer and um, self-assessment being woven in, and for professional inquiry, such as classroom research, uh, to be part of a mode of learning for those adults. In terms of implications for policy then, clearly there are implications for um, CPD, for teachers who themselves are not always recognising a creative opportunity uh, or an opportunity for creativity because they're stepping into the space too soon because of the pressure of time and curriculum coverage. Certainly there is a concern um, across the UK really about policy coherence because while some um, uh, policy uh, documents frame for uh, rationale and aims um, and a subject, the, the rationale of the whole curriculum, like in Northern Ireland, the rationale of the whole curriculum endorses uh, creativity within the thinking skills. When you get down to pedagogic gu guidance at the level of science or in the level of maths, that sometimes gets lost. Now, in, in World About Us, we still have it, but in mathematics, it's less evident. Uh, and certainly, I think there are concerns about curriculum space and time, particularly for primary, in terms of it being overcrowded. So, um, to sum, um, I think we could argue in relation to the um, UK data, and it would be true of Northern Ireland too, uh, that 
um, at least in preschool, there's a more interactive, more exploratory, small group, collaborative way of working that's based on an inquiry model, which may not always be articulated by the teachers as a, uh, an IBSI approach, as it were, as an inquiry-based approach to science education, but that approach they do use fosters the young's curiosity, their creativity, their thinking around the problem, because they're often setting their own problems. Whereas in primary, it would appear to be that the pressure of the curriculum or the perceived pressure of the curriculum tightens the teacher's frame such that they don't feel that same opportunity um, to foster uh, more and to enable uh, creativity. So I hope that gives you a feel for what we've been working on uh, and just wanted to acknowledge uh, my colleagues uh, in that work. Thank you.